I'm back. Ha! <laughs> Y'all thought it was over. It's not over. This is still money, 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 money matters. You feel me? Big money. <laughs> Past big money. Um, um, bloody red Michael Knight. Um, I rock riding around this bitch. Um, super faded. Um, ball tight faded. Um, temp fades, crispy lineup, you know, all blade, no paint type of crispy with the with the shears type of shoot a three pointer, cross you over, dunk on you type of three sixty degree basketball dunkins, you know, like my man. I told you these this show was gonna be special. We not focusing just on music. We not just focusing on streets. We focusing on people because I want y'all to know how rich our culture is in Phoenix. People say, ain't no culture in Phoenix. You got me fucked up. The man who's sitting next to me been a part of the culture for the last 20 something years, man. He been putting in work, putting it down. Talking about owning barbershops that where people were shooting videos out in front of, people was getting killed out in front of, people was selling dope out in front of, people was doing everything out in front of. To having motherfucking barbershops in the in the suburbs where millionaires are coming in, to doing all types of shit, to coaching people, to doing just everything, man. We want to highlight our greats. I told you I got super friends. Y'all thought I was playing. And I figured out what that movie was. It's the Avengers. My homies is the Avengers. I figured it out. I got Captain America. I got all these niggas. That's my partners. I'm telling you, y'all keep playing with me. I'm going to call them up. And we're going to do something stupid. And that was the whole purpose of doing this Freeze TV. Was to show and highlight people like my man right here. So, at this moment, y'all help me welcome to the Freeze TV world. My man B. Hey, 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 hey. How you doing there, sir? Man, Thanks welcome, me welcome, freeze. welcome to my world, bro. Man, it's a pleasure. Thank you for man, being, welcome being to here. my world, man. It's not often I get to sit down and reflect. Man, you a dope guy. Period. Like you're dope. You're one of the superheroes of Arizona. You know, man. Thank you know, you. probably of the United States. You one of the first barbers that I know that come out of our class who was cutting celebrities consistently, though. You know, like not just. Oh, somebody came through. Let's go find a bar. No, motherfuckers is looking for you. You yeah. know? And it wasn't yeah. just mainly for the haircut. It was just for the person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think the, the, the person is rich. You know? The the the, the personality, the, the the swagger, the sagwa affair. The thing that makes you undeniably you. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I think it's just so dope. So that's why I wanted to invite you on the show. Because I wanted you to kind of breathe on these people and kind of tell them where you come from and give them a little bit of your history so they can connect with how why I think you so dope. So that being said, get it get it started, man. Tell them where you come from and how this whole how this whole thing started. All right, thank you for very much, man. It's a nice introduction. Uh, my name is Brandon McFadden, Arizona native from the West Side, Maryville. Came from Apollo High School. Uh, Definitely been in the barber game for 23 years professionally, 24 years from barber school, and with maybe like a month of sick days in 24 years, huh? Mm -hmm. If that. So I've been going strong. What you see right here is a body of work of, of sacrifice made for the betterment of the, of the barber industry and to push the culture forward in all ways possible. You know, uh, I knew I was blessed with a great talent. And uh, speaking of, I just want to, you know, thank, take a moment to thank God for making this moment possible. Cause been through a lot to be right here, and just even the drive here, you know, it's 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 a blessing to be here, man. So, you know, I always I always got to put him first in, in what I do, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's, it's it's very vital. Cause you know, once you get tested and you survive some things, you realize like, damn, that could have been me. Yeah, and, you know, you realize you got about nine cat lives out here. So, you know, I know I'll use a few of them, and I know I got some angels out there watching over me. So, you know, I just want to pay homage, man. You know, it's real in the field, and, uh, you know, that's how, I, that's how I got here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the resume is real, you know. Uh, shit, my first celebrity was Floyd Mayweather, you know, uh, 2099, 2000, Diego Corrales fight. Rest in peace, Diego Corrales. 
you know. I uh, was cutting for three months, you know, and that's probably what made the biggest buzz in the city because he, uh, someone, he was in the hotel and he asked uh, someone that was working there where he got his haircut from and it happened to be from, from me. So he uh, called and was like, man, I need to get, come see you. And this is Pretty Boy Floyd at the time. So uh, <clears throat> called me, I'm like, yeah, I'm on 67th Avenue Indian School. Come on down, I got you. He's like, I'll see you in shortly. This man called me you know, a few minutes later, an hour later. He's like, man, I'm on 67th Street in Indian School. Where you at? I said, bro, <laughs> you are you in Scottsdale. You, you gotta take you. you yeah, know, he went the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're on the avenues. Mm -hmm. So you take any, any school about thirty minutes down to yonder, and you'll you'll see us. It's gonna look different, <laughs> but but you any school see. will take you all the way to the west. Yeah, from uh, so from east to west. So um, yeah, and he came through, and and it was a great relationship that we got to build. I was cutting him and his crew up. Was, the whole shop was cutting his crew up, but I was cutting him and Big L, his manager, and still his manager. Um, yeah, it was, it was a good run, man. Still my highest paying celebrity ever. Man, thank you, Mayweather. If you ever see this, man, I still pay homage. Because you, you blessed me. He's like, he's like, is that enough? I'm like, dude, I'm 1920. Is that enough? Shit, hell yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's, it was it was something that, that triggered my, my career, like, how can I just end right there? Mm -hmm. with, with, you know, he wasn't who he was, but to watch him grow was something serious. What was it like cutting hair in that environment and being able to touch a celebrity like a Floyd Mayweather? Like, what did that do for your self-esteem and for your psyche? Like being that, because you was you was next to the projects. Yeah. You know, you was partners with some some of the most controversial people ever to come through Phoenix. Go oh, say say name. There was um um you know <laughs> it, it was <laughs> you All know right. it All was right. it was it was indictments. It was people that been to prison. It's people that done went through all types of shit. And you was sitting there as a young brother, like no, I'm gonna hold on to my dream. Yes. You know I'm going through this whirlwind. I'm going through all of this, but I'm gonna hold on to my dream. Like what, you know, cause you know, if, if, if you notice in my interviews, I like to find out how people go through these moments because I think it's so many people who are forced with these moments who they gotta, now they gotta be like, man, I ain't fucking with these niggas no more. Or all oh, these niggas done put me in a fucked up situation. Or oh no, I gotta do this to stay true to myself. Yeah. And you're one of the people who went through a public moment like that in Phoenix to where a lot of people was like, hey, where be at? Be do, do, this and this and this. And you was able to maintain your your manhood and grow. Like, where does your mind have to be in a moment like that? Well, when you deal with celebrities, it's about energy. You know, so for you to be right here and to have this beautiful, wonderful setup, this is a Man, shout out to you for doing this. This is a great setup that you got here. Thank you. For real. Thank you. Um, you know, but it's about figuring out your, your power and what your purpose and why you're breathing and why you're here. Like Nipsey say, rest in peace. But uh, uh, being around them celebrities, you gain something from them. But the biggest thing you realize you try to realize why you crossing paths with these people. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a it's a lot it's a lot that goes into it. Mm -hmm. um, but first and foremost, I was raised around the Laker Showtime era with AC Green being my family. So so that's how you get to cut AC Green hair. That's your family. That's my family. I see you cutting his hair. I'll be jealous. No, nah, that's not to be. That's, 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 but not jealous yeah. in a in a negative way. It's good to be jealous. You know, it's good to be jealous. I think it's a pure feeling to be to to see one of your friends winning. Man, you know, I yeah, think yeah. that's pure. I, I, I get it. I get it. So it, it's it's strictly family, strictly blood. You've been raised since I was a youngin. Uh, we call him Junior. We call him AC. It's, it's, it's senior. Uh, 
about to pass away in 2009. Uh, but uh, just being around that upbringing, you know, Byron Scott, Magic Johnson, uh, James Worthy taught me how to beat King Hippo and, and Mike Tyson punch out. Mm -hmm. You know, so just just having that type of uh, upbringing and then being around some of these other people that's on their way up, it was it was easier to accept and just be treat them normal folks. Like we're all normal folks. Like I said, the energy, but understanding that they figured out what their specialty was. Mike Epps. Cause Mike Dylan Mike Epps came wanted to figure out where the black folks in Phoenix were at, so he came to the shop. Shout out to Tom Don. Um, but it's just these artists, we're all artists, you know, and, and so they just figured out the master they mastered what their their art of what they signed up for. Mm -hmm. And so when it came to me barbering, it's like, I got this. And when it came to handling the business, my father had a successful insurance company. So I seen him maneuver and take care of business. Um, so the business side was, was somewhat installed, you know, but I still had to incorporate my own two cents. And mm -hmm. I took some marketing classes, some, some uh, that helped me you know, people didn't know, but my, you know, it was able to separate my barbershop from the typical shop in, in the state. You know, that's what, that's what my goal was. Mm -hmm. You know, every, you come in my shop, no matter what chair you sit in, it was going to be the, you was going to get the best haircut ever. So I made sure I hired barbers that could cut as good as me, or have potential to cut as good as me or better than me. But uh, if you were just a trash barber, you wouldn't go make it. I wouldn't go mess with you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what kept the shop resume at a, at a top tier. Mm -hmm. um, now, now, just the business side of it was, you know, you, you, there's a lot of emotions involved, uh, but as long as you stay focused. Yeah. Let me turn this off, because this part of the conversation I like. Is this even my phone? Whose phone is this? I guess it's my phone. Cause I know the number that's calling, but I don't. I'm not familiar with this phone. It's not my phone. Somebody done slipped me. Somebody done snuck me. Nah, you but, good, yeah. But yeah, the business. The business side. Is business. How how important so, is it to have? So to have to the business will take care of itself. If you got a strong foundation, which I knew I had, paperwork. The community. I had you know the, the Maryvale, Westside, Trevor Brown. You know, it was it was the foundation was set. So I was never trying to be like my my mind. It was it was there was enough to go around because mm -hmm. you know people started stepping on toes. We we doing all this before the internet. You know, we talking about from '98 to 2012, 2009. So uh, <clears throat> you know, just the business side was just knowing what moves to make and not having nobody hand in the cookie jar, uh, getting good advice from certain people. You had to, I had to reach out, you know, definitely reaching out and getting solid advice was, was critical. Mm -hmm. you know, and, that, and I think that's something that as a culture that we, we can, we lack, you know, we, we, have, we lack to uh, put our pride to the side and be like, nah, I need some help. Help, I guess, in my situation. So sometimes you just don't have nobody to reach out to, but other than that, it's that's that was real some of the biggest you know uh, factors of the game, just knowing what moves to make, you mm -hmm. know when to cut the wall off and just have a straight salon instead of having a unisex, you know when to market, how to market, you know when to put words instead of pictures, what words to put. So it, it was it was certain ways to dress it up because we made it to the Source magazine, we made it to New Times, we made it to Fox 10. So we had a, a successful run, voted best barbershop in the city. Mm -hmm. You know, so why did the shop close? Uh the shop closed in 2012 from some new owners, mm -hmm. new ownership. They took over the plaza, and uh, they did some. They, they didn't want to renew my lease. They would have renewed it for, for some table, I know, some, some, some money, but I had just remodeled it and I had to wash my hands and take the L. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, 
83rd had opened up in 2007, so they're still open, you know, shout out to 83rd. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. That's dope, like, you know, your journey is one that's, that's a triumph. It's of overcoming, it's of staying committed, staying locked in, staying, you know, and, and, and like you just said, we need those people that we can call and reach out to. And you're one of them people that people need to know. Like, this is a spirit that I want to project. You know, yeah. I want to I bring and invite the people in the interview who can empower. You know, the people who have the spirit and have the, 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 the tenacity or have the, the, the stick with it or the know-how and all of these different words we use to describe people that we see continue to overcome, you know? Yeah, 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 because, we, you know, we don't, we don't have too much leadership in the forefront. But I think we have it. It's just not in the forefront. Right. But we have it. It's, it's out there. But so we got to put on a, it. On a major scale, they don't want it out there. No, but on a major scale, we about to put you out there. We about to put Mr. Bowtie out there. We about to put Freeze TV out there. We about to put Two Tone out there. We about to put um, all of these different influential black males who bring something positive to this community yeah. and bring something positive to this diaspora. We about yeah. to put y'all on the front street. Yeah. Because right. because you deserve it. Like people when 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 my kids is in the mall, if they see you at the food court, they need to know, oh that's B. Right. He got the barbershop over there. He work over there. He help a lot of kids and a lot of people. He's a, a good dude in the community. When my kids see you, they need to be like, oh, that's Mr. McFadden. Like, yeah. oh, they need to be wowed. Like, right. not just like, oh, that's a, oh, my dad knows him. Right. Like, no, that's whack. When I'm with my kids and we in the mall and I might see one of my friends and I'm like, what's up, bro? Like, oh, boy, my kids like, hurry up, dad. Like, man, you taking too long. I'm like, do you know who this is? Right. Like, like, and you know what, you know what, to, to, to piggyback off that right there, my biggest thing that I wanted to leave in the game was I wanted to make sure the barber game was changed and I wanted for folks to know when they came to Arizona, there's a good place to get haircuts. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, you know I mean, at least my name be on the top of the top. So, you know... Your name has been on the top of the top for 20 plus years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and not only have your name been on the top of the top, now you're in an environment now that's more um, representative, I should say, of, of who you really need, of who you really are and how we see you. I like that. Appreciate you know that. what I mean? Like right now, I think where you at now allows you to be who you always needed to be. And it's crazy about placement. Placement is crazy. Like you could see some. Like you might, you might like it's a player who might be on the Kuzma. Yeah. Kuzma was on the Lakers last year. They was talking about getting rid of him. He ain't this. Kuzma not did it. He hit the Wizards showing out. Yeah. Sometimes life is about placement. Sometimes life is about the teammates that you have. And speak to that because now you have a totally different group of team teammates that you play with now. And I'm watching you win on a whole different level, more spiritual, it's more shining, it's more, you know, it's more like, damn, look at my guy, like, it's, it's beautiful, you know what I'm saying? I saw you at the Suns game, going over the, um, over at the, it was the finals or something, I'm, I'm on the line, I'm looking at you, look, see what I'm saying? You, you were just geeked, I'm like, look at him, like, man, this is dope, like, what, what, where does that come from, man? How is that? What is that like, man? Like breathe on that because now it's 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 like I said like your story to me is a story of triumph. You know what I mean? Like like when when everybody counted you out, you came out shining. You know. This is my dog Romaine, Brisbane. 2014, December 2nd. Uh, life changing moment. Uh, he got killed by the cop. Uh, taking McDonald's to his little girl. 
right after the Mike Brown situation. Uh, I was in Chandler for about two months when that happened. And uh, that was the bottom. And uh, now I thought I'd been through a lot. But at that time, it was, uh, I knew I couldn't tap out. I had been through so much that everything I've been through, I had to use at that moment to survive. And mm -hmm. mentally, you know, I had, it was losing a friend like that in that manner, that close, that time. Uh, I had something else going on at that, that same week. You know, my kids, my uh, fiance separating, you know, in the a, a worst way possible. So I had two different battles to deal with that was just challenging my soul in a way that uh, I, I had to fight back. I had to show what kind of fight I had. So what I did was pray, dig deep, and went to the gym. And I took all my stress and frustration out to the gym. And it's been seven years and I'm still at it. And it's just a way of moving forward and, and rebuilding myself to put out positive energy to my, you know, my people. Because, yeah, what you see at my shell is good and glam. And, you know, you may see a few battle wounds. I ain't got no tattoos, but, you know, fuckers know. But, uh... It's just been uh, a strong, a strong uh, testament to my faith and just pushing forward to for my kids, you know, for the sake of getting to this mission of being a, the best person, best barber and best business person ever and just trying to conquer this bullshit and, you know, not letting that be, not become another victim to what they want because, you know, we're strong, we're righteous, we're smart, and we're intelligent, and we're powerful. And we figured it out. And, you know, once we get, or get organized, it's going to be chaos. You know, so I just want to be part of that chaos. You're, you're like one of the, one of the, um, and, I, and I thank you for sharing that with us, too. Because there's, there's so many people who who need to hear that. You know, because you're one of the people who I'm sure is so many people that suck from you every day. It's somebody, you cutting somebody hair and they coming to tell you what they going through. And you you taking all of this in and trying to help them. Oh, uh, this is how you get your job. You need to do this. This is how you get through your work week. This is how you uh, do this, you do that. But, you know, like... Who are some of the people in your life? I, I heard you speak of your father and him being a solid, a solid um, stone in your foundation. But how important is it for you to have have these type of people in your life and for other people to have these type of people in their life? Uh, yeah, it's, 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 I can't put it on the scale until I hear other father, other other friends that don't have the fathers and don't have didn't have what I had. So it's um excuse me, you know I'm still you drink some water and whatnot, but uh, no, it's all good, man. This is this is this is what this is about. Um, having a a, a a positive male, a positive male uh, role model was. Everything, you know, meet Magic Johnson in, in 1990, telling me to be good. Hmm. Right. Well, Magic Johnson in 1990, that was like. Hold on, hold on. 1990, and then not too much longer, he comes out with that stuff. So. Yes, but in 1990, he was God. Mm -hmm. He was like, he was a Spartan warrior. He was, he was Maximus. He was. Yeah. And for you to be able to touch these brothers. Yeah, it, it was 
I mean, it, it, it seems everything like being right here it seems normal, you know. But it's it's, it's a privilege. Like just that all just saved my life. Like just being everything the barber saved my life. I can't say how many how much it just impacted my life and others that you know see my my daily lives and you know I had a lot of youngins that just came up and told me like from the most random spots I'd be out how much uh you know me just going to work every day in the hood and six seven Indian school taking care of myself and driving a nice car inspired them to want to go out and do more go join the military and go travel and, and see other things so stuff like that definitely was uh what it's about, you know, inspiring these, <clears throat> just making your light shine wherever you at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're you're one of them men now. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure there's thousands of people out there who who got big old hands on in the stands cheering for you to win because of the influence that you've had either on their life, their brother's life, their cousin's life, their somebody, whoever yeah, these I, hand these hands right here. You know, like, it's only a chosen few, you know. I'm yes. a barber. Yeah. I, I know how this shit go. It's yeah. a chosen few. A lot of us, can, it's people graduating from barber college today. And it's only going to be about one or two out of that bunch that's going to have them hands. Right. And it's it's special, you know. And for me to for me to see, like, 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 not only see heads that you cut, but see heads yeah. that you cut. Right. I think it's dope, bro. And I know that this shit is coming from somewhere because I know how hard it is to be dealing with I got to pay my light bill, but I got to sit here and coach this nigga on how to pay his light bill. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got to figure out how I'm going to be a man in my world, but I'm coaching this person on how to be a man in his world. Yeah, like, well, you know what? There's, 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 to to um, piggyback back off that, it's just... The situation I'm at now, like you say, you see the growth, you see my happiness, and you see, you know, the, the what I'm doing out there in Chandler. And I'll shout out to the shop I left, these man, Dwayne Phelps, a hell of a owner. You know, it's a he's a capper. He's a, the foundation is strong. You know, it's one of the main reasons why I wanted to link up with him. You know, I, I knew he needed my help, and I needed his his. Knowledge is, is guidance. It was, a, it was a relationship, a match made in heaven. Yeah, we've been knowing each other for 20 years from the frat parties. I heard my man over there, bow tie, talking about uh, the uh, frat parties. Yeah, the frat party days is real. You know, that's where, that's where a lot of stuff happens. You know, was so a, them was some amazing times. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, he shout out to the Kappas. You know, the the Greek world is, is major because they support each other in a different way. Mm -hmm. And that's that's one of the, the highest organizations that you know the black culture has. You know, besides of, you know what else is out there. Yeah. But uh. Or have yeah. you ever pledged anything? Are you a member of any fraternities uh, or anything? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm an honorable of a few. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. You know, uh, no, I, I, I'm a I'm a spiritual gangster, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't. I'm not there. You yeah. know, I, I just ride my own wave, and you know. And speaking on cutting hair, um, man, have you ever participated in any shows, any competitions, or any fashion shows, or anything that like highlight or like kind of show to to the forefront what you do? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. Just uh, last week I had a hair expo where I get like thirty minutes to present my work on stage. Mm -hmm. Normally I do about four to six demonstrations real quick. Some will be pre-cut. Just do the other side real quick. Show some beer, show some sponges, show the real way to fade, not do these bowl cuts and let the hair hang over. But uh um, yeah, there's, there's definitely, you know, I, I deal with Design Essentials. They uh sponsor me, so they give me a couple of different presentations a couple of uh, times a year. Mm -hmm. um, um, but you know, it's you have to do everything to get yourself out there. And I think that's what you know, the industry, or these new barbers kind of, you know, haven't figured out, you know, they just want, they, you know, put it on the Instagram and think it's going to happen, mm -hmm. you know, but you got to, you got to really go out there and not so much kiss hands and, you know, do free you haircuts. You got to touch some people, though. But, you got to you know, touch the people. You got to do some charity work. You got to do some, you got to do barber events local, you know, travel, 
You gotta create your own flyers. You gotta market yourself. You can't depend on the shop owner to, to promote you. Mm -hmm. You are your own independent artist. So, right. and ain't believing in you like you gonna believe in yourself. So, that's what made me, you know, who I was, you know. And as a shop owner, you know, I, I promote in a different way, but. Yeah, you've seen it from all different angles. Yeah, yeah, but in the day, you know, you gotta be in gorilla, gorilla mode, like, you know, it, it's, it's beast mode when it comes to marketing. You know, I can't think one way is gonna work. You gotta do many different avenues and one of them shit's gonna pay and you're gonna get real clientele in a, in a long way. If you, want, you want lifers. Yeah, you build a real solid relationships. Yeah. You know, but I think um, a lot of that goes back to what we've been talking about already is them positive influences and role models. But how has you being a parent affected you? Because when I see you with your daughter, you just be so happy. You just be lit. You be like, turn. I be like, wow, this is dope. Like, and it's a couple other people who I, I look at their Facebook, like, you know, Two Tone and some other people when I'm doing research and I'm looking at these people. When I'm interviewing a person, of course, I'm going to do more research than what I've already done yeah. as far as just knowing you as being one of my super friends. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And every picture I run across with you and your daughter is just like, you lit. Like, yeah, just, yeah. And, and where, what, what, what does that mean and how does that translate into your relationships that you build with other people? Uh, well, you know, definitely for me, you know, anybody can make a kid, but you got to be stepping into that fatherhood role. So being a father, you know, was everything. Paris, my first, lady like Paris, London, Brandon Jr. You know, they were just blessings, you know. So it's um, it's without a doubt to go through thick and thin to, to you know, enjoy life with them. And it's, it's that's what life's about, you know, just making memories making sure that they have it better than you. I mean, I, shit, I mean, I can't, AC Green definitely helped me meet some people I couldn't really touch, but, you know, I, I, I try to get them a, a good, you know, view of life, you know, and spend as much time as possible, because it, 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 it happened quick, you know, Paris being 18 now, my youngest being, just turned nine, Brandon being six. Um, being a father what was, I mean, the best part of life, you know, it's it's where the it's where your time goes, you know, because years go by so fast. <laughs> it is where your time goes. Yeah. So it's uh. I complain about it every day. I be telling my kids, I spend all my time driving y'all around, like. Yeah, yeah. So it's not too much that you that you get, you get a thrill in life outside of your kids, you know. Basketball games, going to the finals. That was it, it was bigger than the finals, you know, just. Arizona, you know, Phoenix, you know, since Mike Jordan, you know, put us out, you know, we've been faith. If I'm a Laker, Showtime Laker, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, come on now, Kevin Johnson, you know, I'm a native, so it's, uh, it's only, it was only natural for me to embrace the, the run, mm -hmm. you know, uh, even when they was playing the Lakers, I'm like, uh, with these sons right now, like, come yeah. on, dog, <laughs> for this our time. I was pushing that same line, like, yeah, we, you know, you could like whoever you like, but right now, you should be all Phoenix Suns. The yeah. Valley should be lit right now. I'm still now. pissed off at Chris Paul, you know, he, he, he sold us out. You, you think know? so? Come on, man, there's some dirty money going on in there, man. <laughs> I'm going to say right now, man, <laughs> fucked it up, Chris. I'm going to holler at you, Dougie. <laughs> nah, man, get this ring and get it, man. You're good. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> hey, his his people, his entourage is in the background like, no! No, he like, get the fuck out of here with that shit, man. Like, we was really riding with the Suns. That was, it. last year was our year. Yeah. If we ever have a, a opportunity, last year was yeah. our year. Yeah, bro. especially you who, you know, yeah, you play yeah. the game. You seen, yeah. you seen it, man. Last year was our turn, man, like. And being a real Phoenician, like you say, we ain't been there since Jordan beat us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like That was a hell of a feeling. Yeah. You know, we could taste it. I wanted to go to a game bad. I just couldn't afford it. I was looking at them prices. I was like, 
man, then I looked at the, I looked and I'm watching the game and but you I'm was looking there. At the, you was and, there. And you was there. You was there though too. Yeah. I'm like, I mean, you know, as long as you got to be in the building one time, you know. Whoa. Yeah. It was a, like. This is the ultimate environment. This is, like. Yeah. AZ heaven. But then you turn around and came back. Then back. Then back. You like, yeah. I was in that mud. Hey, you was in that mud. I, hey. I was not even on, on that. I was in there when they was losing. You know, I've been riding with the Suns the past four years. You yeah. Know? It, 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 I've been seeing Booker, you know, rise as a light-skinned man, you know. Shit, it's hard out here being <laughs> light-skinned in these streets. You know, shit. I had, I, I had to show him how to stunt one time in these clubs. Like, hey, you're, doing, you're doing this shit wrong, Doug. Yeah, you, you, you got to put some motherfucking... Go out there and put some... <laughs> and let them know who you is, dog. You damn right. You know, so you know earlier off the camera, you was talking about you know dealing with these fathers and, and dealing with some certain type of people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, it, it's it's really just about being good to everybody. You know, so you never know who can do what for you. And mm -hmm. you know, so just a lot of people I know are just you know connected in the city. So you know, it, it just brings some some. Amazing. Amazing. Now I'm in a, an hour two gets different, bring me some different type of clientele. Yeah. But not only that, it's just you though too. Yeah, uh, yeah. you know, with, you know, location, 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 like any business. But you still gotta have a dope product when they get there. For sure, yeah, you, you gotta, know. you gotta outdo it. Now I definitely take pride in being bigger than the myth. So what's in the future? What can we look forward to? What can we, where, where, where can we see you in the next five years? You know how like we always say. So what are your goals, or what are you done? Damn near achieved everything you wanted Man. to do in life. So what's the next phase? Like, what's the next chapter in your life? Like, what what can we look forward to? I mean, I, I definitely would like to, you know, do some more, uh, do some barber consultation. You know, uh, you know, travel and teach other shops how to become more successful. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just just do more of a teaching seminar type thing. Do more hands on, maybe 12, 12 people, twelve barber classes. Um, but definitely just more of a teacher perspective, uh, you know, business wise, uh, I'm working on right now, trying to get this, you know, get a franchise, you know, to where we can get a nice premium urban upscale barbershop in every major city, you know, shout out to Shop by Lefties because it's, 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 we worldwide, you know, mm -hmm. so, but hopefully in the next five years, you know, just have a nice steady uh operation bigger than uh Awatuki, you know yeah, yeah. And definitely have a lot more youngins coming up underneath me and, a lot more to offer yeah yeah just teaching the craft you know i love the barber game and you know got to pass it on man it's 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 love man there's a lot of good barbers out there man i i, I see it and it's inspirational man i gotta you gotta stay relevant you gotta learn from these new jacks you know do you are you familiar with any YouTube barbers? Do you be watching like barber cuts and different shit on YouTube? Uh, yes. I mean, no, hell no, mm -hmm. no, I don't, because a lot of it is, well, shit. I just ain't got the time to, you know, uh, pull up YouTube. But I, I don't have no real struggles in, in fading, you know. Yeah. So. Well, no. Some of them just are like personalities. Like oh. just influencers, like just swaggy and just I cut over you, blah, 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 because I think you're the type of person that would be a dope influencer yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. Like just watching people watching you cut. Yeah, because a lot of them and talking me, to you. A lot of them piss me off. Like, it's a little too corny. <laughs> yeah, you know. You know I swear they piss me off. All the airbrushing shit. I yeah, mean, nah, I ain't a little topic, but fuck, man. I don't even know how to do it. I don't even. I'm my, my. I'm hashtag all blade no pain. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've even lost a couple customers who came in. And I think I put one of the best cuts ever on them, but I didn't have no paint for them. So they was like, "Bro, I can't." You know. I mean. Yeah, I'm crispy. I'm clean. But if you're not finna paint me, I'm going down there. Yeah, I mean it's, it's part of the game, you know. But uh. How do you feel about that though? Like the enhancements. I mean. It, it's part of the game now, you know. It's it's it, the game has evolved so much that you have to have that as your arsenal. Like you can't. It's like basketball. You see, basketball has changed. You know, 
Curry over there shooting from half court. <laughs> Nigga, that shit ain't real. <laughs> what? That shit is that's, yeah. that's pure, you know, same shit, the same scenario. So, um, you gotta accept it. You, you, no disrespect to anybody that doesn't do it. You know, it, it's it's uh, uh, as as me, I do it lightweight. You know, I don't rely on it, but I feel like a haircut has to be waterproof. Like, you have to be able to take a shower and sweat and go to the club and that still be crispy. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't have the car, the, the, the boozer effect. Like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the worst in, in the game. So, you know, you gotta be able to do this shit in peace and, you know, what? Fuck out of here. <laughs> so, you know, you're holding down to AZ, man. You know, yeah. cutting, we real cutting out here. So, so if people trying to get at you to get get cut up, how they find you? How they reach you? Man, B underscore McFadden. Hit me in the DM. You know, I'm lightweight on the Instagram, but you can you can follow me. B underscore McFadden. Shot by lefties. Um, Coldus Barbers and AZ for sure. Appreciate and if they wanna if they wanna get with you on some mentorship or just some manhood shit, same way. Uh, yeah, man, reach out. You know, I definitely. I, you know what? You're not the first to tell me about you know YouTube and and. and creating a bigger platform so um, I definitely know it's a necessity and I see how you got your little shebang so it's an inspiration on them so definitely in the near future it's gonna be a goal of mine to be more accessible to the people you yeah. know so yeah man just keep up being I'm just start my Instagram be underscore McFadden I'm kind of ancient with it you know I ain't all this you see my page ain't gonna be all this High graphic, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna see some quality cuts, and I'm gonna talk my stuff, man. You know, I've been inspired by the best. Fifty, you know, Jay Z, you know, Mayweather. You know, I shook hands with some of the best. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you see me, you gonna see, you gonna feel all that, you know. So this is, it's what it is, man. Been holding Jay Z down the major how, way. How do you feel about um, Babblers? Who was that? Oh, Clippers. Clippers. Who was that? What? As opposed to wall, I mean, or Andis or walls, like if you was cutting the head. Man, shout out to Los. What, what's the what's, what's the barber name? Los, Chicago barber. Yeah, Los. Yeah, he cold, but I ain't messing with him, and I ain't messing with nothing cordless, you know, except for the, you know, the power hit, the ones with the uh, adjustables, yeah, you know, with the detachable blades, but a real you cannot outdo that Andis GTX corded clipper. You know, so all that glit and glam, the babbless, that's cute, but I guarantee it, if I go over with my Andy's GTX, I'm gonna get some more hair off it. So it's gonna last, that customer, that, that haircut's gonna last a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna come out a little bit more crispier without all that, you know, spray paint. Yeah. So Andy's, Osters, you know, the cords, you know, Andy's Masters, definitely my way to go. You know, the babbless. You know, I see, I, it's just my old, I'm traditional barber, so, you know, I just, I'm just having fully adjusted to that new school way of cutting, but uh, I see some quality haircuts coming out with that, so I can't truly knock it, you know, I'm just talking my shit, you know, but I still see some quality haircuts coming out with them shits, but it's not my, my forte. Because, like, yeah, I've been, I've been back in school, I had to, I decided, like, yeah, I'm finna just get back into it, I'm a teacher, I'm a whatever, mm -hmm. so I've been back in school, and, um, trying to get like a master instructor, PhD. And um, the dudes who cutting now is on some totally different shit. They coming yep. in with totally different tools, totally different. And um, and it's all about the paint. It's all about the spray. It's all about so on. And, and it's just, it's, it's dope, man. It's, it's just, like That's you dope. say, it's evolving. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's interesting, I should say. You know what I'm saying? Like, but like, I'm more traditional. I'm more old school. I'm still, you know, I wanna, I wanna hit you with the Andis. I'm a, I'm a, I'm an Andis T liner, you know, just to life. Then I'm coming back with my razor. Then I'm coming back with my Andis again. Like I just, I love that Clipper, you yeah. know, the the Andis Master. I just yeah. love that Clipper. That just, you know, them is just dope Clippers. The Wall Senior, you know, that's like the first Clipper I ever started with. I used to do edge up, cut edge up everything with one Clipper. You know what I mean? And yeah. It's like, I love that clipper. That clipper is like, it's my go-to at all times. You know what I mean? Like, so it's just interesting to talk to different barbers and see sure. what tools they like, you know, and if, on their shears, if they like ducks, if they own 12 inches, if they own 10 inches, if, you know, 
some some barbers like the curve on their shears. Some people like just straight ducks, you know. Yeah. Then some barbers don't even know how to work big shears. You know, they don't even know how to work no 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 big shears. They just used to, you know, guards and yeah. you know just spray paint. So it's just it's all different. I got one techniques. Question. I got mm -hmm. one question off the technique off the barber game, but just barber to barber. What was your favorite barber scene in any, any black movie? Or any movie period, like. Damn, that's a good one. Yeah, because the barber, the barbershop has so much to do with the culture, and, you know, just, it freezes time for it. You know, like the whole barber game changed after the Ice Cube came out with the barbershop one, mm -hmm. two, and three was trash. So, you know, but that's what, a good what, question. What, what, what scene? You know, just you gotta go back to. I'll be eight dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I think the I think I think I think the, the the coldest scene in that in that to me was when when they when they sent the 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 um the congressman to the little boy in the front like that's something that happens in the barbershop in the movie you talking about yeah in the movie mm -hmm. but that's something that happens in real life mm -hmm. too often for lack of respect and lack of both ways like I think like the 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 young barber was set up to be the butt of the joke as well as the congressman was set up to be the butt of the joke and when I watch when I watch movies that's about cutting hair I put myself in the barbershop so I'm in there like mm -hmm. I was in that movie I worked in every shop I was you know I was the nigga who who I was I was in there when the when the white guy came in and said they got fish in the floor over there. Like yeah. I was like I felt that because I worked in a barbershop that was just raggedy before. And we yeah. wish we was like that barbershop over there. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? And then I've also been the barbershop that was the dope one, where people wish they worked over there. You know what I mean? So I've I've seen it from both sides. But the one thing that, like just speaking on on the scene from a movie. Like that scene when they when when they gave the congressman to the little boy, I thought that that was like fucked up on both sides because that really showed how we disrespect the client and we disrespect the barber at the same time because you crush the barber's dream of what he's doing as well as you lose confidence in the customer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and you knew that that was the congressman and it was just a joke and it was a funny movie or whatever, whatever. But that happens every day in real life. You know, in real life, you watch people come in and it's a, it's, just, it's every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, same question to you. Uh, well, you know, definitely off, obviously premeditated. So, Samuel Jackson, Juice. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you don't slip through, you know. Yeah. Slip through. So, this is way he handled that whole situation. You know, being a middleman. And, uh, that, that, I mean, not inspired me at the time, but that scene just always stuck with me. Yeah. You know, just being, this is demeanor. Just, I mean. No, that was player. Yeah. That was real. He already knew. He was like, how you even know? I just. Right. You know, like, yeah, he yeah. already, he was that guy. Right, because every barber in the, in the, you know, in the shop, you know, has an ear to the street. Yeah. And so. But I kind of always wanted to be like, who's the man, you know, the, the, the man that owned that barbershop that got killed? Yeah. Like I always wanted to be that type of dude in my life. I wanted to run for city council, man. I wanted to be a barber. I wanted to like be the city councilman that owned the barber shop in the neighborhood. Like that was my dream as a kid growing up. Right. Like I wanted to be a fireman first. But then they took the, the steering wheel off the back. I just wanted to drive the, the ladder. You feel me? I thought that was fly. I just wanted to be on the back of the fire truck whipping the ladder like when the fire truck turned the corner. I went, but there's a lot of Handling. politicians but, that started as a barber. No, of course. Like, that's the route that I wanted to go till until I started cutting hair and realized that barbers don't really get the respect that they deserve in mm. the community. For the role that they play in the community, they don't get the respect that they deserve in the community. So, is do, do you think there's a reason why people don't... Like, because in other states... The barber is held up to a different esteem in the community. The yeah. people, you know, they value it. They hold it, you know. But here it's kind of like, nigga, you work for me. Nigga, here, take this little, 
twenty dollars, this thirty dollars, nigga. Cut my hair, did nigga. You like, hold on, little homie. Like, what, what, what? You know, what, what do you think that's about? I, I, you, to me, I think you're speaking from a south side perspective. I'm just speaking from a a, a poor perspective because I've I've always worked in poor shops. You know what I'm saying? I've, well, I've, I I yeah, haven't. Every every shop has has been. Every urban shop is in the, you know, in the, in the community, urban community. So it's not too much money, too many jobs around there. So it's it's a lot of small change money. Um, so <clears throat> you know, the uh, say it again. What you what you asking? Well, I'm, re I'm I'm really asking like, how do you deal with how like some of these young dudes feel like, nigga, you work for me, I'm paying for a haircut. And back in the day, the barber was more so like the respected, wise old owl in the back of the forest. That was the barber back in the day. But now the barber is more so like the D-boy, the trap, like in, in the hood, in the inner cities, in the hood. Not just here in Phoenix, in South Phoenix, but when I'm in Atlanta, when I'm in New York, I'm bumping into the barber who got on 20 chains. He got, you know, he got the pack in the back. He got, you know, it's 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 well, yeah, the jugging. Barber, the barber game has definitely evolved, you know, to you can relate it to the music industry. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all artists, like I said at the beginning, you know, but every barber, you know, takes the game in, a, in a, their own avenue, their own way. You know, you talking about respect, and you talking about, you know, all that. It, you know, it all depends on ownership, on how the shop is being ran. You know, my shop, you know, when I took over, before I took over another level on 6-7, it wasn't all what it was supposed to be, you know. I went in there and, and did what, what I, you know, what I did. So, um, it, people don't realize, you, you realize, you cameraman, you realize you're talented. Everybody realize they're talented for a reason. You just have to let your light shine wherever you're at. And realize that moment is, is for you to embrace and, and to explode. Enjoy the shit and, and realize that you were built for this. And and so, you know, every like I say every barber just takes it in a different way, you know, but to change the game and to, to make the mark, you have to you have to care about it. Because barber saved my life, but it also can create monsters. But I think that's dope. I like how you said that. But I think you already answered the question when you said ownership. See, barbering taught you how to be an owner. And some people can take it positive and some people can take it negative. Yeah. But one thing you've learned how to do is be an owner and you've owned everything from your manhood to your parents and your fathering and your you've even opened up here and owned some of your life stories and events that has happened in your life. You're a owner. Yeah. You know, and and that's dope, man. Like this shit is like this this conversation right here was refreshing for me. Because like I said earlier, like you're somebody who I've always respected. But I've never gotten a chance to just really sit down and vibe with you the way we would always kick it, but we would never vibe. We would just be surface. Yeah. And it's crazy that we got a camera in front of us for us to really vibe. But I hope that this is the start of something that can kind of continue and kind of keep going, because the brotherhood and the manhood of of positive black brothers is what I want to project to this world. Yeah. I want people to. Like, people be coming here and they be like, man, Phoenix is, no. Look at, I want people to know, if you look at Freeze TV, you're going to see some of the black dudes that's out here that's on top of their game. Yeah. And you can pull up on them right now and they're accountable. Yes, sir. You know, and I, I think that's dope, man. Like, I respect it. Like, I, like I was telling my, my guest earlier, I had, um, I had Mr. Bowtie on here earlier. And um, you guys are some of the brothers that I really admire. You know, like, admiration is a crazy word, you know what I mean? Admiring somebody is a crazy word, you know? And on my live on Facebook the other day, I was talking about love is more so an action. And um, you might know Blue, um, 
Omar from from the five from from Maryvale. Omar, yes, yeah, is, Omar man. Blue. He yeah. he taught me that love is an action. One day we had a big argument. And we was talking. I'm like, man, you could love somebody and you just don't never tell them. He said, then how they know you love them? Right. How you don't show them? You don't do nothing. How do they even know? And we had a big argument, and we just like, damn, and it was like, man, I learned from my from from my brother that night that, bro, like, love is an action that's demonstrated, and you're one of the people who have demonstrated true love for Barbara and true love for the community, true love for your kids and your family, true love for everything that we say is hip hop, true love for everything we say is representative of the black community. You know what I'm saying? Man, I appreciate and, that, man. Yeah, no, it's dope to me. So me, I, that's why I wanted to bring Freeze TV back. So I could tell people, show people how dope my friends is. Yeah. Like, oh, you think your friends, I'll be watching YouTube. I'm watching these people do interviews. They goofy as hell. These people sitting there, they, they drunk, they high, they all on some whole other shit. We can sit here and smoke some weed. We can drink some goose. And we can have an intelligent, articulate yeah. conversation about business, about being a man, about being accountable. Yeah. And we can share some highs and we can share some lows. And you know what you're doing. You know, you know like what you're doing. No, nah, you know what? I think a lot of conversations lack just people listening. You know, when you cut hair all day, you know who, who you can talk to and who's gonna listen and just cut you off and talk about the next subject. Mm -hmm. So you know, you know, if you're listening, if you're watching this, you know, just be a better listener. You know, shit, just you know, if somebody talk to you, you know, you, you might just. Say they live, you know, just responding to what they talking about, you know. So you never know. You know, that's deep. Yeah, that's deep, man. Well, thank you for coming out, man. It's a pleasure, freeze, man. Definitely, man. man if don't nobody tell you, I tell you, I'm proud of you. You know what I'm saying? You one of my heroes. Man, so respect, thank you man. for just being you, man. And thank everybody who contributed to making this man who he is, man. Because that shit is dope to me. You feel me? It's dope to me. These are the examples of manhood that we projecting out of here, man. Right here from Phoenix, Westside, Maryville. Yeah. A product, homegrown. You know what I'm saying? Been through it all. Through indictments, stand strong. Ain't in nobody paperwork. Ain't in nobody situations. Ain't in nobody nothing. Solid, you feel me? Like, this shit is real, man. Fuck with your boy, man. You know what it is. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Ding it, man. Fuck with your boy. It's Freeze, man. My man B came in to fuck with me. It's an honor. It's a pleasure. You know what I'm saying? Much Ball love, game, King. Ball Much game, love, man. King. Love, man. Hey, man. Love, man. Fuck with it. And hit this man if you're trying to get a dope. Ah, 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 ah. And he ain't with all of that. He gonna get you right. Yeah. He gonna get you right, man. I'll just link up, man. Yeah. More power to the people, man. It's real about uplifting the, the everybody, man. Just making making the culture better, and, and you know, it's a, the barber game is a billion dollar industry. And I'm just glad to be part of it. Man, that's what it is. Yeah. Fuck with us, man, and we out. Yeah, respect. Peace.